You could argue there's been a greater national sportscaster in the history of time besides Bob Costas. You'd just be wrong is all. Olympics host, World Series play-by-play, -play, Super Bowl, NBA Finals, more than two dozen Emmys. Our LA correspondent Jeff Cicero met up with Bob for a Southern California chat. Hey Mike, out here in California got a rain delay. Look who stepped into the booth. <laughs> <laughs> so, do you do this show as Chet Waterhouse? No, I should, though. You, you should. That's, that's my advice. It might flow better. Bob Cost is here. Now, Bob, yeah. let the people know when I, when I called you, you're, we're friends. You're probably the most knowledgeable sports guy I know. And I called you got to get out more. Uh, yeah, really. <laughs> I called you to say, would you, would you want to talk some Big Ten football? And you said, with enthusiasm, I'm in the middle of a baseball game. Right. Call me later. <laughs> right? I did. That's exactly what I said. So That's exactly what I said. So let's talk baseball first. Okay. It's your passion. Chicago, heart of Big Ten country. Right. Can the Cubs do it? Can they really genuinely do it? It's a crapshoot. The Cubs are the, the team that America would latch on to most readily. It's just the most relatable thing to the casual fan or even the non-baseball fan. When did you know growing up that, that you weren't going to be an athlete? Because you're buff now. Look at you. You're pumped. You're yeah. working out in a booth. I yeah. swear yeah. to God. Look, you're in the booth just... Here's the deal. Here's, here's the athlete or non-athlete I was. And I play along because, you know, I'm, I'm in the booth with guys who are in the Hall of Fame. Right. Or, you know, you're standing next to Shaquille O'Neal when I did the NBA. And it's a funny visual. I, right. I get that. All right. So I, I play along with that. But I was a good enough athlete to be the last guy cut um, from my high school baseball team wow. and my high school basketball team. But this, this is a good story. The, the baseball coach, right, right, he pulls me aside. He goes, Costas, you're not bad with the glove, but I don't think you can hit your weight. And I don't think you weigh 120 dripping wet, which might have been true when I was in, right. in 10th grade. Right? He goes, but you know what? You seem to know a little bit about baseball, and you're always talking. Have you ever thought about being a broadcaster? And I said, you know, that's all I think about. And, he said, and this is what he said. He goes, good, then get the hell out of our way and go practice broadcasting. <laughs> that's what he said. So the, to answer, the, to, to retrace this circuitous route we've been Damn on it, here. I gave him too much time. The, the, <laughs> oh when, when did I realize I was not that bad a schoolyard ball player? I was not the last guy you'd pick. Right, I was not right, the right. guy in right field picking four-leaf clovers and not paying attention to the game. I, on, that, that me. on that level, I wasn't that bad. But certainly, I was realistic enough to know that I wasn't going to be a world-class. I wasn't going to play. I couldn't make my high school teams. So how was I going to play beyond that? So I thought if I was ever going to get into Yankee Stadium without a ticket, it was going to be to sit where Mel Allen and Red Barber were rather than to stand where Mickey Mantle was, because that wasn't going to happen. Do you have any superstitions watching a ball game? No. No? No. My dad did. If, if his team was rallying and doing well, and I was watching the game with him, then he wouldn't let me get up from the position in which I was sitting. <laughs> <laughs> and if it was a sustained rally and you had to use You're the like facilities, <laughs> it's like <laughs> crossing Holy. your <laughs> Jeez, come on. <laughs> you know, th this rambling conversation, which, which was mostly rambling because of me, um, reminds me of this fact, of which I'm oddly proud. My father <laughs> was a big time gambler. And so, when, and he didn't go to casinos or the racetrack yeah. or whatever, he bet on ball games. By the time I was nine or 10 years old, you could give me a football game, let's say on Monday, uh. weekend's games are over, Giants are playing the Eagles in Philadelphia, and I'd give you the line within a point when I was nine or ten years old. Wow. Yeah, yeah. A at nine, I couldn't even add, let alone <laughs> know the spread on a game. I learned now, math. That's how I learned math. Figuring ERAs and slugging percentages and batting averages. And how did I learn geography? How did I know that Cincinnati was in Ohio? Because the Mets were playing the Reds. That's how I knew. So you're saying forget Common Core. This is, this is the new math. Yeah. Learn the spread. Learn how to balance your checkbook. You're done. This is you your charter me. school. So that was quality time with your dad. No question. I worked on your HBO show. Yeah, on the record. Right. We created a segment. I created it because it's called 9 and 90, where yeah. I, I dared you 
to, to cover nine topics in 90 seconds. Let's do a miniature version of this. I'll keep it easy, I'll keep it big 10. 13 words or less, give me your impression of these programs. Ohio State. Perennial power. Michigan. Not so much anymore, but could get back there. Indiana, and you can talk the entire scope of sports, not just football. Well, you think first of basketball, and even before Bob Knight, Branch McCracken, you know, and they've had some success post Knight, but not as much. And Knight, to the modern fan, even though he's been gone for a while, Knight is still the symbol of that program. They've also had one of the great swimming programs in the history of the NCAA. They got there in that respect. They're not yeah. quite like Stanford, not quite like Stanford, which annually wins that kind of combination of scholastic and right. and all across the board you were sports so excellence. Close. You were so but, close till we got to Indiana. You could have said Bobby Knight, love him, good night. You couldn't do it. You can't. No. It, it, I love that. Though. You know what I'm going to do? I'm going to pick up that chair with Herculean <laughs> strength, or is it Herculean? And I'm going to throw it across the room because I'm so with ticked me off. In it? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. That would be a, that, as, as a tribute to Knight and as a rebuke to you. That's what I'm going to do. <laughs> We're done. Class dismissed. Now go to class. We're done.